Redline Logbook here for another Don Machi video. This is another geography video where I'll talk about other major locations outside of Aurario. Except, for the most part, I've already talked about the major ones. In my last video, at least the places that we know the most about, I'll discuss a couple more major locations that we know quite a bit about, and then a bunch of smaller places that we know very little, but at least we know their names and what they're about. The first location is Rakia. Rakia is a major empire on the western part of the continent. It's a familiar nation ruled over by Ares. He is the god of the entire nation, but he isn't the only god in the nation. Well, let me explain. Rakia was, of course, founded by Ares, who appointed his captain as basically the king and the royal family of the country. And anyone else down in town, he basically declared as nobility. One of the groups that he chose to be nobility were the Crozo family. The Crozos were able to make powerful magic swords because of their spirit blood. As a result, they were able to craft thousands upon thousands of magic swords that Rocky was then able to use to conquer a massive amount of other countries and just burn down entire regions of the world. By doing this, the kingdom of Rakia continued to grow more and more. They conquered other nations, and those other nations, which had gods within them, because that's what a lot of gods did, were then basically forced to subjugate themselves to Ares. Just like if you lose a war game, if you lose a real war between gods, uh, a contract must be signed between the gods, where the loser is subject to the the decision that they made early on. In this case, it's being uh, subjugated by the winner. As such, many gods that uh, were conquered by Ares are forced into his servitude within his kingdom. This is how Ares is able to amass a massive army for an entire country. Because while Ares personally has 10,000 men with his uh, fauna, the other gods handle roughly uh, the other 100,000 soldiers. Yes, <laughs> Rocky has about a 100,000 man army. Now Ares is somewhat of an idiot, but he isn't completely. He's just foolhardy. Once he sees that someone is talented and another god's familiar that's subjugated to him, he obviously forces them to transfer to him, so he always has the more powerful soldiers. Now, the Rakia army is, of course, pretty weak. The majority of them are level 1, and then their commanders are usually, like, level 2. The reason for this is because, once again, they were heavily reliant on the Crows of Magic Swords. They don't actually have any experience fighting themselves, so they weren't able to gain any experience points. And so when the Crozo family lost their ability to create magic swords, Rakia basically was screwed. They became a default nation. While they didn't lose a lot of territory, they basically had to sign an agreement to just stay in your own corner, basically. It's obviously still a very rich and wealthy country, because it's a nation that was able to conquer many other nations, so it has a well-made trade network, plenty of uh, <laughs> resources. It's a pretty good country. The problem is that Ares just wants to conquer the world, and so he's just a pain in the ass. And so the nation is constantly just going to war with Aurora because they want to, to take over the most powerful city in the world. They want control of the dungeon, so they can then have their soldiers go into the dungeon, train, level up, become more powerful, so they can then once again conquer the world. They really don't need to. They're, they're, they're at a point where their nation is a great nation. For the most part, the world now considers Rakia to be a nuisance more than a th great threat, except for the elves, who, because the Crows of Magic Swords were used to burn down many of their forests, the elves hate the Rakia nation, and also the Crows of Bloodline. The second location I'd like to discuss are the Bale Mountains, which exist just north of Aurorio. They're famous mountains for being filled with monsters that escaped from the dungeon thousands of years ago. They also have very granite and rocky terrain, just like the middle floors of the dungeon, so being there reminds adventures of, uh, well, the dungeon. It's seen as a very hostile, uninviting place that no one would like to live, except for the inhabitants of Edis Village. In fact, most people don't even know Edis Village even exists. Edis Village was originally an elven village thousands of years ago, but as the monsters overran the area, it slowly became a place for outcasts and uh, half-breeds. How does a village that's completely surrounded by monsters survive? Well, a thousand years ago, when the one-eyed black dragon flew over the mountains, some of the scales fell off its body. These scales still radiate the power of the black dragon, which scare away other monsters. So, what the residents did is they built shrines out of the scales of the black dragon and encircled completely around the place. As such, it made a perfect ring to ward away all monsters. Also, the people of this village worship the Black Dragon. They see it as a god. Now, they also understand the Black Dragon is the dragon of the apocalypse, and so they also wish for it to be killed. But they don't hate the dragon like normal hu other people around the world do. They understand it needs to die, but at the same time, it is what allows them to live in this hostile region. 
Location 3 is actually a multiple of locations surrounding Aurorio. The castle ruins in the north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, west, and northwest, they're referred to as castle uh, ruins, but actually they're ruins of forts. These forts existed before Babel Tower was used to plug up the dungeon. As such, these were basically fortifications to hold back the waves of monsters. But after Babel Tower was built, there really was no need for them, and so over time they eventually were abandoned and turned to ruin. Near the southeastern uh, ruins is a town named Argus. It's really nothing special, it was just used by the Hesta Familia while prepping for the war game with Apollo Familia. Locations 4 and 5 are two separate countries. The first country is Opera Country Melistora, and the second country is Amusement City Tierra Vega. Both of these countries are entire industries are based around entertainment, music, gambling, the art, everything. Everything you can imagine is basically their job, and which is why their number one customer is Aurorio, where the entire entertainment districts and all of that are completely handled by these two countries. In fact, Santiago Vega are the ones who own the Grand Casino El Dorado, which is the biggest casino in the city of Aurorio, and basically runs itself as its own government. That's really all we know about these countries. Location 6 is actually multiple locations. It's all of the elven forests. Just like how humans don't live in one country, the elves don't live in one forest. With that being said, all the elves, even those who claim to be kings of their own nations, still worship one family, the Alf family, which is why the main forest is the Alf Royal Forest. The Alf Royal Forest is, of course, the forest where the royal family is. This is the, also the homeland of Roveria, who is a member of the Alf family. What separates this forest out from all the others is that it has the oldest and largest sacred tree. The elves in all of their forests are based around a sacred tree, which is a massive magical tree that has certain properties. In fact, both Ryu's old and new wooden sword is made from a branch of a sacred tree. Obviously, the one with the royal family is currently guarding is the most important one in the world. Another forest is the Wished Forest, which is the homeland of Lefia. The Wished Forest is known for having some of the most powerful magic users in the world. While the elves are all very powerful when it comes to magic, the elves in the Wished Forest, for some reason, are special. They are second only to the royal family themselves. It's unclear if prodigies move there, and that's why the place is filled with such powerful uh, magic users, or the sacred tree just helps give birth to powerful mages. A third elven forest is the Ryumium forest. This is actually the birth land of Ryu herself. There doesn't seem to be anything special about this forest, though. The Ashina Forest is the homeland of Philvis. Once again, there doesn't seem to be anything unique or special about this forest either. Hajazaning Navog and no, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, is another forest. It is a forest located on an island in the middle of a large lake. This elven forest is actually currently abandoned. It used to hold two kingdoms, a kingdom of white elves and a kingdom of dark elves that hated each other and were constantly having fights. That is until Freya was able to manipulate the situation to a full-on war where both sides slaughtered each other until only their kings remained, Hogni and Hadin. They were then picked up by the goddess and the remains of their kingdoms and their people were gone. It is unclear if any elves have decided to move into the vacant lot, or other people in general, or monsters even. Otherwise, it's just a vacant forest. The Yenit Forest is the homeland of Selti, former elfin mage of the Strea Familia. And this forest is actually famous for its people being lovers of knowledge. In fact, their holy tree was actually somewhat converted into a giant library where they store books of information about a wide range of topics from around the world. And finally, we have the White Ice Forest, which is the homeland of Alicia, an elf of the Loki Familia. This forest is located to the far north of the continent, and as the name implies, it's very uh, cold and snowy there. Seventh location is a small town called Pradaluka, where Loki and Finn first met each other. And this is where the Loki Familia got started. All we know about it is that it's a small town next to a river at the base of a mountain. Another location is actually another small town called Karuna. It's actually near Aus Royal Forest, where Riveria's homeland is. This is the place that uh, Finn and Loki stayed at right before they went into Riveria's homeland, illegally, obviously, and were able to recruit her. And then not too far from Karuna is Rahada, which is a dwarven village that Garth is from. The fact that there was a dwarven village right next to the royal family's forest of elves is kind of interesting to me, because dwarves and elves just do not like each other. Another location is another mountain range. This one is east of Aurario, called the Alvey Mountains. And this mountain is not that important, except for the base of the mountain, there's a CEO forest, which is actually considered a sacred land. 
It doesn't seem to be home to many elves, which means it's most likely sacred because it's filled with spirits. Uh, spirits can be things like undines, which are water spirits, or nymphs, which are plant spirits. There's all kinds, salamanders, etc. And they also make uh, forests their homes, just like elves do. A place that we do know a little bit about, that's actually quite close to Aurorio on the eastern end of it, is the swordsmithing city of Salgan. So as you can imagine, Salgan actually has a massive connection to the Hephaestus familia and Hephaestus herself. It's actually very common for Hephaestus to go there whenever she's out of Aurorio and recruit new smiths to her uh, familia. So if you're a blacksmith, it is one of your biggest goals to go to this city so you can one day be scouted by one of the greatest forging gods who ever lived. A country that actually has a good connection to the smithing city, and also Rorio is steel mining country of Sharam. Basically, they mine Damascus, and that's their main ex. Now, if you want to talk about a major player in the world, you have the magical country of Altea. Altea is a powerful nation that's on par with uh, Reykia. That's one of the strongest in the world. They're the place that's foremost in studying of magic and understanding it, and is believed to have several high-ranking adventures. All spellcasters, of course. Now, when it comes to magic, the rule is that you can only know three spells, except for Lethia and Reveria, because they can use way more than three. This magical kingdom hates them. So, as you can imagine, they're not friendly to Aurorio. Another great empire is the Empire. It's actually where Luri is from. It's a nation with multiple territories after conquering many other countries. As a result, uh, they are very much feared by much of the world. They're basically what Rakia used to be. It is also believed they have a bunch of high-ranking adventures as well. A more depressing location is the Abandoned World. This is Alan and Anya's homeland. It used to be a country, until overnight it was annihilated by the one-eyed black dragon. Its cities, its people, its infrastructure, everything about it was just destroyed. And what remained are basically monsters and bandits. Finally, we have the region of Dedeen. Dedeen is a massive area with multiple different environments within it that is, well, unexplored, so we don't know much about it. It is believed the herb of never-ending perish exists there, which means uh, an immortality plant. As you can imagine, it's a place where many explorers wish to go to find immortality. It also has another location within it known as the Black Desert. This is the region that the Behemoth basically settled in. Before it was slain by the Zeus and Hera familia, the Behemoth's skin leaked a powerful poison that killed everything. Even though more than 15 years has passed since it was slain, the region is still uninhabitable. No plant, no animal, nothing can survive here. It is a barren wasteland. And that is all the known locations within the Damachi universe, for now at least. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up so you enjoy more Damachi and other amazing things. Thank you and have a great day.